It's been six months since I filmed a video. What's up you guys, my name is Tyler and welcome back to whatever the heck this is. I don't know what I'm doing with this channel but I hope to revamp it a little bit. I am a photographer and self-portrait artist and while I am definitely not the best, I still think that I know a couple things in my three to four years that I've been doing self-portraits and photography. I started self-portraits in 2015 and I went from taking these to taking this a couple weeks ago. So the proof's in the pudding. I'm sorry, Brenda. So today, due to popular demand on my Instagram, I have decided to make a video to show you how to step up your selfie game and take self-portraits. It's going to set you apart from everyone on your feed. If you don't follow a lot of photographers and things like that, then this will definitely stand out from the rest of the duck faces and the blurry photos that you see on your feed every single day. Do people still do duck faces? So yeah, this is how I take my self-portraits. I don't take my self-portraits on my phone. I use my Canon 80D with a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter 1.8 lens. That's a mouthful. Even if you don't have this equipment, you can still take amazing portraits with your phone. Your phone has a timer on it. You can set your timer on your camera, set it up in the position that you think that will work the best, and with a little bit of trial and error, you can get a pretty damn good portrait. And when you think about it, your phone does have probably a better camera than a lot of these DSLRs, and that's saying something because look how small this is, and then my rig is like, but you can get amazing portraits with a iPhone. I've done it before. Just set up a timer, pray. I have notes full of ideas for portraits. The time depends on what your concept is and what you'll be doing. So like for example, one of these portraits took about three hours to do the makeup and one of these literally took the time of me setting up the camera. That's it. Easy peasy. And if you see something on the internet that you really, really like, don't copy it. For goodness sakes, do not copy it. Because that is not staying true to your art and you're just stealing somebody else's. And if you are heavily, heavily inspired by somebody, make sure that you tag them in the post so that they can see it, so that people know that you were not like the sole creator of this idea. Use Pinterest. I know it seems like a very white suburban mom thing to do, but really use it. It has so much stuff for photography and concepting and just a lot of inspirational things. And it's great. So use it. Has anyone noticed that I've been carrying this plant around into every single shot because it looks sort of nice? <laughs> Composition is everything. You need to set up your shot as best as you possibly can because that's the first thing that people see. The way that the image is set up on the plane is key. To see what my camera is seeing, I connect my phone to the Canon Connect app. I know that not everyone has Canon, but I'm sure that Sony or Nikon has an alternative to that. And then I set off the trigger using my phone, hide it really quick, and hope for the best that I get the shot that I want in the two second timer that I usually set up. It's also great to remember that if you don't like the way that the photos come out, only you have to see them. That's the magic of self-portraits. No one has to see the bad ones. And trust me, there will be a lot of bad ones. Okay, new outfit. So I didn't think that just saying it would be enough to let you guys understand what's happening in these photos. So this is how I take them. So I have my camera on my tripod above me. Hello. I then connect my camera to my phone through the Canon Connect app, which is really, really cool. I will put a screenshot of it somewhere. I'll check my composition in the app just to make sure everything looks good. And, and I will try out a couple of different poses, figure out what really looks good, and then look at it. Oh, no, that doesn't look good. Or this doesn't look good or whatever, whatever. Tr trial and error, find out what works for you and then I will press the shutter, throw my phone, try to hide it as quickly as possible in the two or 10 second timer, get in my position, let the focus pull, and then it'll take the photo. I then review that photo to make sure that it looks good, and if it doesn't, try again. And you'll know when you get, whoops, I'm sorry. And you will know when you get 
the right photo because you'll you'll just know. You'll you'll know. Yay! I'm laying on the floor and it's really comfy. <laughs> Okay, bear with me. I know that this lighting is horrible, but we can make this work. I forgot the script. Okay, so I am in this small ass hallway with only natural light to work with from these doors, and I want to make something cool. I want to work with it somehow, not having to use anything other than this natural light and maybe the ring light. So I want to make something that looks really cool, but it's a hallway, Tyler. What are you going to do? I mean, like, you can lean on the walls, you can sit on the floor, you can hang from the ceiling. I don't know, try to find some way that you can make this a really cool shot because if you're just standing in a hallway, what's the point? <laughs> I have a tiny little studio space downstairs that I have a backdrop and things like that, but there's not really that much space to do elaborate set setups or anything like that. But if you do something great with this tiny little hallway, you can do it anywhere. Take the space that you have and utilize it. I absolutely hate when people don't utilize their screen space when they're using Instagram. It like really agitates me. It literally pains me to see people who post selfies and portraits in landscape format. Like why? 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 The way that our phones are made is vertical. Like, it's vertical. All my photos and videos on Instagram are all posted in a 4x5 format. I know that 4x5 is annoying, but on most phones that takes up all of the screen and it will draw the eye to your photo. If you're sharing your screen space with another photo, then people are gonna be like, oh, well, there's another photo right underneath it. Let's scroll past this one. They won't take the time to look at your art or even like it. And with Instagram's algorithm like it is right now, you need the likes. Trust me, you need the likes. I'm getting heated over Instagram. <laughs> So that is all I have for you guys today and if you enjoyed it and want more photography videos click the like button and subscribe because it really helps me and I would love to start making videos on photography if you guys want that. If you follow my Instagram, which you should be, and if you don't you can follow it in the link down below, then you know how much I love this. You can also follow my Twitter down there and subscribe again. I already said it so I will see you guys next week or whenever I decide to make another video. Bye.